Callie, we need to talk about Ronnie. He's been slacking off big time in his studies. His grades are going downhill. He needs to shape up or he'll have no future, even with my genes. What? Ronnie is slacking off. That doesn't sound like him. He's always been a hard worker. I haven't noticed any change in him lately. You must be blind. He's a different person now. He's probably got some girl on his mind. That's the only thing that makes sense. I don't see any difference in him. He's just growing up. He's a college student, you know. He should have some fun with his friends, and if he has a girlfriend, so what? That's normal for his age. Most kids have dated by now. Are you crazy? He should be focusing on his career, not his social life. He's been coming home late, or not at all. Don't you care about raising him right? Making him successful? I think it's normal for him to change, especially at his age. He's an adult now. We can't control him anymore. If anything, you're being too harsh on him. He needs some freedom. I can't stand guys who chase after every skirt they see. I sent him to one of the best and most expensive colleges in the country. And he doesn't appreciate it at all. He got into that college by his own merit. He's working harder than ever. Shouldn't we be proud of him? He's got good grades, so there's nothing to worry about. If someone makes him drop out of college, I'll kill her. Even if he does drop out, Ronnie is smart and savvy. He'll do fine no matter what he chooses. You did a terrible job raising him. You know that? I could have done much better. He needed more discipline, more guidance. He should have known his destiny. Maybe I made a mistake marrying you. I had plenty of other options, you know? How can you say that? I'm just telling the truth. You never went to anything but a crappy tech school. Then you became a lowly nursery teacher who couldn't pay the bills. And you turned that kid into a spoiled brat without realizing it. I did the best I could raising him. I may not be his biological mother, but I love him like he's my own. I don't mean to boast, but I took him in as soon as I met him. Even though he wasn't my child. I raised him just like his real mother would have. You're just using Ronnie to fill the gap for the child you never had or will have. I know that, but I don't need my own child. I have Ronnie. No, you don't. You don't get it at all. You spoil him, Rodden. You're too soft on him. I don't spoil him at all. Hasn't he told you how I scolded him? And how does he say I can be scary? Why is he acting like such a lazy, worthless brat? You obviously failed to raise him right. He's always coming home at dawn. He ignores my concerns and my advice. He doesn't respect me at all. He's doomed and hopeless because of you. You've tainted my bloodline. Maybe he's following your example with how you're always coming home at dawn. I earn a lot of money and take care of everything in this house. So I can do whatever I want. I don't think Ronnie sees that in you. I don't think he sees you care about anything. I was the only one who was there for him when he was growing up. You never gave Ronnie any affection or love, ever. I'm sure that hurt him deeply more than you and I can imagine. Your job is to praise me and make me feel good, not to criticize me or doubt me. Who do you think feeds you and clothes you? You do know I have a part-time job too, as a nursery teacher. Your salary is a joke compared to mine. Like I said, you couldn't feed my family for a day. I'm the only one who brings in any real money around here. Ronnie and I know that. But whenever you see Ronnie, all you do is yell at him and tell him he's not good enough. Even if Ronnie is doing his best for once in his life. Can't you just say that you're proud of him? What is he even working so hard for? It looks like he's wasting his time. He's studying hard in a tough college and passing all his courses. That's the least he can do. I'm a CEO with only one son. He should be a natural at succeeding, especially if he wants to inherit my company. He already told you he doesn't want to work for you or take over your company. He'll change his mind. Trust me, if not, I'll make him. First, he'll get a job at a prestigious or profitable company. 
Then he'll join me and have a career to be proud of. That's why he needs to stop fooling around with girls or his friends. In a few years, I want everyone to be amazed at how successful he's become. Isn't that what you want for him and not what he wants for himself? I want him to follow his passion, not your orders. A woman's job is to keep quiet and obey the man. You'd better remember that the best thing you can do is stay silent and help me guide Ronnie to the right path. Do you understand? This is my final, most important duty. If he ever ends up at a crappy company, that's on you. And you failed him as a parent. Fine. I'll take the blame for everything. But I'm going to support Ronnie doing what he loves. You've become such a nagging woman. Nothing like I remember. When we got married, I thought you were a sweet and submissive woman who knew her role. People change throughout their lives, and I'm not the only one who changed. Have you looked at yourself in the mirror lately? This is the last time I'll let you talk back to me. Do you understand? Now go tell Ronnie he needs to start listening to his father. This is the last time I'll let you control my son. Is Ronnie home yet? Yes, he's been home for some time now. Why? Is something wrong? Something is very wrong. How is this job search going? Well, the world has changed and all jobs are online now. So he's been using his skills to find jobs remotely. That sounds like an excuse. He needs to get out there and find a decent job. Well, being pushy won't help him get a job faster. It'll only stress him out. I'll talk to him for you, but he's the only one who can handle this. And he can't control everything. It's your fault and your attitude. He hasn't gotten a single job offer. You need to be tougher on him. Other kids his age are struggling to find a job too. The job market is much harder than it was for us. There's no need to rush this. He might end up somewhere he hates. Besides, if he rushes, he might make mistakes. He has plenty of time and he needs to find somewhere he likes. Why are you filling his head with nonsense about procrastination and giving up? He can't get a good job without working harder and being better than the others. What will you do if he doesn't get a job? That hasn't happened yet and I don't think it will. I trust him all the way. You are a failure as a parent. I regret ever choosing you as my second wife. I should have picked a smart woman who knows her place. That's uncalled for and cruel. No matter what I say, no matter how many times I say it, you don't get it. If he doesn't get a high paying job, his life is over. It might be harder if he doesn't, but I don't think it's the end of the world. Besides, I'm happy, knowing that Ronnie grew up healthy and happy. You're too dumb to even talk to me. Fine, he must get into a famous or successful company and you will help him do that. Do you understand me? Anything I can do to help is minor, so I'm leaving it to him. He can manage it. All I will do is talk and listen to him and give him advice if I can or if he wants. And make sure he dresses well. That's the most I will do. If I micromanage everything he does, he'll feel more pressure and get stressed out. I don't want him to become a recluse. It's the parent's job to make sure he does what he needs to do, even if that means micromanaging or spanking him. I never had to hit Ronnie for him to do well in school. He did fine on his own, so I know your way doesn't work. Your personality is the problem. Being a brat like you are is only making things worse for him. If you don't do as I say, you're hopeless. I'm not going to do or say anything unnecessary. I won't be rude like you. If you want him to do well, I suggest you be quiet and support him. How did I end up with someone like you? I'll never understand that. I had the world at my fingertips and I picked you. Ronnie is doing his best and we both know that. Have some faith in him. Be proud of him. He'll be fine. He's your only son after all. 
I believe in my genes, but I don't believe in your parenting. That thing you raised, you ruined it from the start. I raised him to be a good kid, and that's rare these days. How can you call him a good kid? He does nothing but defy his father and his father's wishes. He should know his father knows best. Frankly, I think he's a failure. Sometimes I wonder if he's even my son. And it's all because of you. How else can you explain my genes being so messed up? Please don't say such things. If he joined my company, he would learn some discipline. Even if he's my only son, he needs my strict guidance. You will tell him to do what I say. And if he doesn't, he can forget about leading my company. I already told you he doesn't want to follow your path. He doesn't want to be the CEO. Everyone wants my position as a CEO. Every employee of mine wants my job and he's my heir. Of course, I want him to have it. Now, do you understand the responsibility you have? We don't want him to turn out like you. I'll tell him whatever you want me to tell him. But I won't repeat your words to him. He's really trying his best. I can see how much effort he's putting in. So you think you can decide how I raise my child, huh? If you don't annoy me until he gets a job offer, I'll consider your efforts a success. But if I catch you or him slacking off, I'll make your life a nightmare. I understand. I'll do as you say. Fine. Well, I'm going to my mom's house tomorrow to help her with something. She wants me to come home. I'm going to tell my mother who you despise so much. Everything you've done. Make sure you do your part until he gets into good company. What? Why are you going to your mother's? You know, I've never done or said anything bad about her, ever. Why do you want to make her hate me more? I barely have any relationship with her. I'm going because I want to. Make sure Ronnie is doing his best. And you better do your best too. Or else you know what will happen. Why do you torture me so? I guess you like it. Make sure you do as I say and be a good wife. If I come home and Ronnie is still in his room, I'll start screaming at you and insulting you. You're the worst. If you're going to your mother's house, the least you could do is be nice and let me help him. I can't help it if you're acting like this. That's your choice. Make sure you help Ronnie get that job. And remember, if you don't make him do as I say, your life will be hell. Ronnie's graduation ceremony is over. He did wonderfully. I'm on my way home now, and I'll be there in about 10 minutes. Ronnie went out to celebrate with some friends. Okay, that's fine. I guess it deserves some fun. I couldn't help crying during the ceremony. I was amazed at how much he's grown. It was hard to see him all grown up, but then I felt happy. I'm so glad I met him and got to raise him as my own. For someone who's not his real mother, you sure do cry a lot for him. I've known him for so long. My bond with him is strong even if I'm not his biological mother. You're right that I didn't give birth to him. But I still raised him as my own child and I always will. I'm just proud of my son right now. I knew my genes would lead him to success. He graduated from a prestigious college and got into a renowned company. I feel great. Now he's ready for the next chapter of his life, which means he's on his own now. You don't have a role in his life anymore, do you? He doesn't need his nanny anymore. What? What are you saying? Thank you for your service, babysitter. You did a good job keeping him alive. If you want to, I'm okay with getting divorced now. Oh. Now that Ronnie is gone, you don't need me anymore? You can just throw me away like that? You must have known. That's why I married you in the first place. After all these years, I could tell by how you treated me. I was nothing more than a slave to you. But I never thought you'd divorce me. Really? You never thought about that, even for yourself. You never wanted to divorce me. Wow, you've changed a lot. When we got married and I realized I was only there to raise your child, it hurt a bit. But I was happy to help Ronnie, if only to see him smile. He learned so many things and I'm happy he did. I'm grateful you gave me the chance to raise him. I feel overjoyed knowing I got to spend time with him and love him like I did. 
thank you for this opportunity. You saying that just makes me sick. I thought after you got old and ugly, you'd be furious by now. Living with you made me stronger and more patient. I thought choosing you was one of my worst decisions. But your grace and kindness at the end here was a surprise. I'm glad you understood why I did what I did. Your understanding was a gift. But on our divorce, we're going to split things up fairly, including your alimony payments. So make sure you pay attention to that. If you don't, there will be legal trouble. Ah, so that's what you were after this whole time. You're a sneaky and wicked woman. You had your eyes on the money all along. Money is essential to live after all. I can't buy food or pay rent without it. Anyway, that's all I want from you, okay? Okay, I get it. I'm fine with paying you what we agreed on. Besides, in a few years, Ronnie will join my company and learn from me. Then we'll make the company grow and become one of the biggest in the market. So I can spare whatever money I want. I can afford whatever your petty needs are. Good, I'm glad to hear that. Alright, I'll start packing when I get home, so don't worry about me. But I have a lot of things to pack since I've lived here for so long, so I'd like a week to move out. That's fine. Take that time you need. Just make sure you don't go over a week. I just want you out. I need to make sure I can plan a party after you leave. I understand if that's what you choose to do. As long as you pay me properly, so I have enough to live off of. I'll be happy. Justice, I'm done packing and I'm leaving. I hope you don't need anything else from me. Thank you for everything until now, especially for letting me raise Ronnie. You haven't called me by my name in a long time. That's strange to me. I thought since this is the last time we'll talk, it's only right. I'm sorry. This divorce is happening so fast. I hope you're not bitter about it. Make sure you keep only the good memories. Forget all the bad ones. Get rid of that miserable life you've been living for so long. Don't worry at all. I'll only keep the good ones. My whole family is happy for me. Really, thank you for divorcing me. <laughs> what? Your whole family? Happy for you? What are you talking about? Because I'm free from your cage that we called a marriage. There's nothing in this world that could make me happier. Besides, I have my dear family members to be with too. Didn't your parents die? Are you still dreaming? Are you listening to yourself? What are you talking about? Ronnie is a dear family member of mine. Ronnie is my family, not yours. He's my son. After all, not yours. Even if you raised him, he's not your family at all. You would have to be his birth mother for that. But he offered to help me and take me in after you threw me out. It seems like he wants me to be part of his family by changing his last name. What? That's totally unacceptable. No son of mine would help a witch like you. Ronnie is living on his own now. He doesn't need your permission for anything. He already changed his last name, like I said. Stop lying to me. What are you trying to do? Do you want more money? I didn't want to ruin Ronnie's and my relationship by saying you were his parent too. Besides, you left raising him to me. What was I supposed to do? And all this time you were with your mistress? Never with your family. He never saw you as a father. Who do you think raised him all his life? Paid his bills. Fed him. Gave him a home and clothes. Ronnie and I are both grateful you gave us money. But Ronnie did everything you wanted him to without complaining. So paying for him is expected. That's all you did, nothing more. I'm coming home right now. Tell Ronnie to come home as soon as he can. His new life is very busy already. He can't afford to come back to your house. There's no one else at home. Just you. And I already moved out of the house, so I won't be there. Where did you move to? Do you really need to know? I don't think I have to tell you. We're divorced now. You're a stranger to me. I don't want to tell a stranger my address. I'm sorry you still have to contact me even after the divorce. I hope you're not angry with me. 
By the way, is your mistress moving in with you? She might be there by now. Living the way you've always wanted sounds fun, doesn't it? Hey, why isn't Ronnie answering my calls? Maybe he blocked you, he wasn't very happy with you. And he put my name on his apartment lease, so I can live with him. He doesn't want to depend on you anymore. There's no way he did that. He did. He needed someone else on the paperwork. I have plenty in my savings from my parents' inheritance. And a while ago, as you know, I started working as a nursery school teacher part-time. You were working part-time? I worked tax-free since I was a dependent, I told you that. Honestly, I also planned for us getting divorced after Ronnie graduated college. And I prepared for that, thanks to my job. You never told me any of this. I didn't see the point, nor did I want to. And it worked out perfectly since you were the one who brought up divorce. So I just went along. Until now, I didn't think I had to say anything about it. Was Ronnie, my son, in on this plan the whole time? He and I talked about it after you told me we were getting divorced. He seemed upset, but he was ready to leave the house too. He understood how I felt. Kids notice things, you know. He was concerned about what I was going through. He thought it was hard, so he wanted to help his mom. He's such a good kid. I'm glad I raised him the way I did. How can you call him a good kid? He's the worst. He might seem like that to you. You need to remember how much of a father you were to him. But to me, he's the sweetest kid in the world. I love him so much. He's done his best and tried his hardest for everything, which is why he's successful. I'll say it quickly so it doesn't hurt too much, but you're unfit for parenting. So please stay out of Ronnie's life. I already told you he's my kid, not yours. And he always will be. He's going to take over my company and follow the path that I set for him. He said he doesn't want to take over your bike repair business. Your title may be CEO, but that doesn't mean your company is good. We know your debt is piling up when you spend your money like there's no tomorrow. He doesn't want to join your doomed ship. He wants to be successful. He is my heir. This is his life's purpose. It's his fate to follow his father. There's no way he listened to your stupid idea. He wants to join my company. Since you won't listen to anything I say, I'll send my mom to your place instead. You have no relation to me, and neither does she. You don't even know where I live, and I have no reason to tell you. I'll find out and come soon. If you or your mom show up, I'll call the police right away. And I'll tell them about your affairs, which will get you arrested on the spot. Also, I want the money you owe me, and I might keep quiet about this. You and your mistress are already together, so this shouldn't be a problem. You and I are already divorced, so I don't owe you anything. You owe me the rest of the settlement money for at least three years. Did you forget this is in legal documents? And I recently did some digging and found more dirt on you. So the next time you cheat, I'll know right away and I'll tell my lawyer. So yes, I have the right to all that money. Please send it to me. Callie, do you really hate me that much? To take away my only son? Don't you think that's a terrible thing to do? I endured your cruel words for over 17 years. Every day of being insulted and screamed at by you. I sacrificed everything to raise that kid when I married you. If it wasn't for Ronnie, I would have left. Your mother always harassed me and treated me like I was worse than dirt. I want you to know that this is it for me. I want nothing more than what you owe me. Please, let me talk to Ronnie one more time. I want to tell him my wishes and plans for him. Ronnie doesn't seem to care about anything you have to say. But I won't bother him about you because I respect his choice. Please, ask him. Ask my son one more time. He's my only family. Please, I'm pleading with you. I just want to talk to him one more time. He's my son after all. I told you before he's done with you. You think you get the hint from being blocked? You're nothing to him, not even a father. He won't listen to your whining, begging, or crawling. He wants you out of his life for good. Your role as a father is over. Justice finally paid me what he owed me. I got every penny of it, not for me, but for him. It was hard for me at first. I didn't know what to do with myself. Justice begged me not to tell his parents about his affair. He tried to bribe me with more money to keep quiet, but I refused. As time went by, Justice's business went bankrupt after years of losses. He had to ask his mom if he could move in with her. His whole family collapsed because of their troubles. My son Ronnie and I live in our own places now. I make sure to have a meal with him once a week, whether it's brunch, lunch, or dinner. 
I often think about what a great man he's become, and it fills me with joy even if we don't share blood. He and I have a mother and son bond. I married that awful man just to raise his son, and I knew that. But I loved Ronnie so much, I couldn't leave him. I couldn't let him suffer. But with the divorce done and living with my son for a while, I think this is the best outcome. So even now, I will always support my son, even if I don't say it. I chose my own way now, and I love life to the max. I wouldn't want to live any other way.